Hello and welcome to Hardway Learning, today, where we look stupid so you don't have to. Today we are doing ethanol content analyzer, ECA, so that we can run flex with the DS1. First thing we're going to do is remove the fuel pump fuse and run it out of gas because as much as Dan loves golden showers, we don't love them with gasoline. So we're going to pull that, let it idle, and run it out of run the fuel out of the fuel rail because we will be tackling these fuel lines and we you know would rather not dump a bunch of fuel on the ground let's get at her so the fuel pump fuse according to our handy dandy manual here is f10 in there fuel control module fuel pump and over here this guy right here, this 15. So our cover, so the polar, thanks Audi. Pull that guy, go start the car until it runs out of fuel. Make sure you got that puppy oriented the right way. You gotta keep an eye on me, Dan. F10 is that 20 amp fuse right there. Let's pull that one and see what happens, huh? Wow, that took a lot longer than I expected. It just died probably like two minutes of idling. So now we can get this fuel line off and then this right angle fuel line right there. And we are going to put our ECAs in line with that. I believe it's the return. Don't quote me on it though. Huh? All right, we got this little clip off here. I'm gonna undo this, but I'm gonna put a rag down here because I'm sure there is still gas in there. And then uh, push this guy out, out that way. How do we get that clown off of here? This other one, it's just got a tab on the back of it, back here. Oh yeah, oh, oh. All right, so we got these, link in description. Those go on each side of the ECA. Click, clack, give a dog a bone, all right. Very nice, very nice, all right. We have some continental fuel line, which is roughly the same length as this guy here. We're gonna have to steal this so that we can connect back to the intake manifold clip. And then we also have fresh a fresh 90 for up by the uh, coolant. So that'll be the same as that guy there. Um, that's this part, Dorman 800-091. So we'll cut this up, get our line set up, and then we'll talk about how we, how we are routing this. All right, so we got these, this hose, uh, and then some hose clamps. This is going to be a 15.3 to 18.5. Um, looks like it's the right size. So we also have this hose fuel line clamp pliers that nice and tight on there and we're gonna size up and see where we want this to hang out which I think somewhere around there um, or there so we could we could zip tie it to this coolant line but it's got to be it's gonna be kind of a hard right bend here so I think we want to run it a little further up so I'm gonna cut this hose 
I don't know, Dan, what do you think? You're like the clean... Clean wiring thread? Clean wiring club guy. So cut a real small strip. Yeah, I mean, if you cut it back like here, you're, that's more than you're going to need, but we can just kind of... Well, I don't know. We if don't you have a ton of line to make this length, so... Like, this is barely oh. enough to... So, like, I'd say we cut this pretty short if we're going to run a short one of that and then use the rest of this line to get here. Because this is all you've got? Yeah, unless we start scavenging the original line, which we could, but I was trying to keep that original line so, you know, when this car doesn't go back to stock, we can use it. Not I don't that know. we couldn't just make a replacement one. Alright, so we did... We, you need two of these to connect to the ECA. We are repurposing the original 90 up at the top. So we took that off the original hose. Uh, you will need, well shoot, no, I think it's just all these, these uh, 12.8 to 5.3s. Yeah, that's what you want. Four of those, so one on each side of the ECA, one on the right angle at the top, and then one for the male one that we're repurposing here. For the OBD2 port, um, you can pop this side panel off, uh, use the trim tool. There's maybe one, two, three, four, I think, clips. Three or four, you fiddle with that. But uh, on the bottom side here, and I'll see if I can set it up so you can see it, of the OBD2 port, there are three little clips, two on the back side here. Right there and there and one on the front if you just use a small screwdriver like this to kind of press up on there while also putting a little bit of force on the actual connector you can get it to pop up and out and then you should be able to just wiggle it free there and not a whole lot of slack here but be able to uh, finesse out the pin we need so we pulled there was the whole two kick eight plate. millimeters underneath, one over here, and then one on <clears> the <throat> by the tunnel, and then a T20 Torx right here, and then the rest of the top, the our, rest of this thing, are just like slip joint pressure fits. So we kind of use the trim tool to pop a few of them out of the way. So with this, oh, with this nice. OBD2 like lock, you can get your um, pick or whatever in here, and it's just this little snap pressure snap here. So you get that in there just enough to kind of wrench this out to the side, and then the whole thing just slides right out like that. All right, so now for me, so I can hold it on that side, and then. Just a little bit of pressure and deepen that one like so. And now we're going to want to heat shrink that so that it doesn't uh, short to anything. Or we could tape it up out of the way or something. We'll push that right through the back of that. Put our retainer back on and uh, finish up the top side. 12 volts will be you're running 12 volts somewhere on this, this fuse box. <clears throat> So to run the wire to the ethanol content sensor, we came under the here and we pushed out this rubber grommet, cut a little slit in it, ran our 12 volt and our signal in through here. So uh, then on the firewall side, that comes in underneath here, sort of right there. Okay, so we've got everything soldered up here and kind of roughly routed from our sensor here. <clears throat> kind of followed the rail for the factory coil pack harnesses. Yeah. Wrapped it. Got our ground running over to the OEM ground lug just underneath that one. And then we've got our sensor and 12 volt running into the foot well. And we'll, uh, We'll tap into one of the fuses, I gotta double check, and then the sensor goes into the pin 15 of the OBD. Boost! Hello and welcome!
welcome to Hardware Learning. We got the uh, ethanol content sensor in. I put in 12 gallons of E85 earlier this week and the car was running pretty rich. Uh, so that kind of was a signal that it wasn't fully E85. I was thinking, you know, since I still had two gallons at 91, that it'd be like around 70. Uh, end of the week, I ran a third of the tank out added more E to 85 we just did the ethanol content sensor and it's saying that it's only 60 so that would explain why the car was running pretty rich but but this thing <laughs> it's a lot happier on corn i tell you what and it's uh it's fuel mapping should be a little more accurate now that it has the actual ethanol content input Flex fuel 